All right, greetings, friends and neighbors. I'm here with Sean Pierce Johnson at Hello. GitCon. Sean, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. I know you've been recording all day. Man, gear man, dude, it is an honor to be here with oh, you. Oh, the honor is mine, I swear to God, it's true. Let's turn this camera off and we'll just talk to each other. No, uh, let's not, we can't. Okay, we'll Pe record it for posterity. People wanna know, my people wanna know what got you started in the YouTube world. I was at a point in my life where I was shifting my priorities around a lot. It was a very personal decision to get back into doing YouTube videos. I actually started my channel about three years before I regularly started uploading videos. Oh really, when was, so when would that have been? Uh, 2008. Yeah. 2009 yeah yeah and i didn't really get serious with it until 2013 that's when i started doing my my pedal demo show yeah and uh after i did that it was just i, I wanted to shift my priorities I, I wanted to do something with the extra time that i all of a sudden had a time i lost a job um i was just ready to just say screw it i'm striking out and doing my own thing and, and following the heart yeah and I mean, it's led me here. Yeah, I'm you've sitting been next to you. I've been watching you forever, buddy. <laughs> oh, come. Oh, go on. Tell me more. Oh, I no, will. Just kidding. Um, what's your favorite color? My favorite color has always been Dodger blue. Sweet. What uh, is your favorite day of the week that does not end in D A Y? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would have to say uh, miércoles. Okay. Well done. You're only you're one of only two people to get that answer right. <laughs> Uh, would you say snakeskin or dragon skin? Ooh, that's a tough one. I am a fantasy fan, so dragons are kind of cool. Yeah. But, you know, you can't deny that, that's, that that faux snakeskin covering on some amplifiers looks pretty cool. Uh, but sadly, dragons do not exist in real life. Sorry, kids, to <laughs> spoil that for you. So uh, we'll go snakeskin. Okay. Do you, do you, so uh, that... Was my next question was going to be, you know, snakes surely are descendants of dragons, so it's really kind of one and the same. It's a trick question. Mm, could could be. Could I don't be. think so. I I'm think not you're really right. one to get into the evolutionary debate or the creation. Debate. I'm going with what you say. You're a pretty smart fella, and I'm not going to get into a debate of knowledge. No way. First time somebody's called me smart this week. <laughs> well, it's only halfway through the week. Yes, Other people are going to realize. Um, what was your first pedal? My first pedal was a Korg Axe-1G multi-effects processor. Hell yeah. Actually, I hate the, I'm glad I asked it for my viewers, but I already knew that as soon as you said it because I tuned into the live stream last yes. night and watched it, and you said, I still have it. I still have it. And still actually will pull it and out. did you hear people to... applaud when you said it? Yeah. No, I was... It's hard to get people to applaud at any... It's a bunch of guitar players, but Dude, they, everybody was kind of like, I grew up yeah! In, <laughs> I, I grew up in a time where the multi-effects processor was really starting to hit the market. Oh, me too. And, and anybody who was anybody... Well, not really anybody who was anybody, but no. anybody learning how to play guitar at my age, the time, they immediately just got like a Boss ME50 or, yeah. or something similar like that. I just, I remember walking into Guitar Center and seeing the wall of pedals, and I just said to my dad, hey, for my birthday, I want, I want a pedal. Yeah. He's like, what do you, one do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what half these things do. Yeah. Uh, and so he got me that. Because we didn't have YouTube to watch no, and see we what they did. No, we didn't. We had magazine reviews, but they yep. weren't very good. Right. Um, but I'm actually still finding things about it. Oh, that, I'm sure. That I, I didn't know when I was, you know. 14, 15 years old. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize it had built-in cab simulation, so I'd be running it straight into the front end of the amplifier. Phase issues, ahoy. Uh, I would have done that, too. Hey, man. Yep. Nobody told us. Nobody told us. There, were no, there are no rules. Um, soup or bread? Always bread. Always bread. Always bread. Which leads me to my next question. Um, pie or cake? Ooh, see, this is tough for me. Yeah. Because my wife is a fantastic baker. Ooh. No matter whether it's cake or pie, mm. this guy is happy. Do your fans know that your wife is really the secret to your success? That she is the, the, um, the Lorne Michaels of the, of the Sean? I would, re I would refer to her more as the George Martin to my Beatles. Ooh. That's the analogy that, Good. that I like. Uh, but no, she helps me with all the shooting. She, uh, she's not afraid to tell me when I suck. Yeah. And I really like that, especially when it comes to like doing session work. Yeah. If I do a bad take, she will tell me and she will say, you can do it better. I know you can. That was good, 
but you can do it better. Good for you. That's great. I, and I had the pleasure of meeting her. She's very charming. You're a very lucky man. I am a lucky man. I so, am. what was your first guitar that you had? Ooh. You know, to go with the Korg. Now, let's see. This is... To go with the Korg. No, 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 no. I bet you're right. Bad question. Just first guitar. Not, first not, guitar. Not the time of the Korg. That was uh, different timing. Okay. First guitar was actually a guitar that belonged to my dad that I got on kind of like a, a permanent borrow basis. It was a standard black Squire bullet strat. Oh, those are cool. Pretty classic, you know. Uh, but it just wasn't me. Yeah. It wasn't me. And it wasn't until I got my Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 that oh. I, I found my musical soulmate. Nice. Did you ever watch uh, Happy Days as a kid? Yes, I loved it. Loved it. Do you recall that, you know, Richie and Potsy and Ralph and Chachi and all, they had a little band that would play sometimes at Arnold's. Do you recall the guitar that would be on stage with them while they played? You know, if it's going to be, I can't recall. That's okay. I don't even know why I recall, and it's possible that I'm recalling incorrectly, but what I remember is a TV yellow, Les Paul Jr. or Les Paul Special, one oh, or the sweet. two. And Potsy would be playing at one episode because Richie had to play the sax, but then sometimes Richie was playing it. Anyway, because Potsy was singing Teen Angel or something, anyway. Wow, Potsy singing Teen Angel. Oh man, Aaron Weber, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Let's see, who were you most excited to meet this week at GitCon? Oh my God. You know, Henning told me about this whole thing like a year and a half ago when he first got this crazy idea. That's what idea. he said. And, uh, Man, I was just like, this could either tank severely or it could be something really huge. So when the final list came out, maybe two weeks before we left, uh, I'm just looking down this list of names and it's like, oh my God. Like I've known Dan and Mick from that pedal show for a few years. I've worked with companies that Mick works with. Uh, I'm a G2 owner, so Dan and I have, are always conversing on specs of that yeah uh so i've known them for years so it was just going to be great to get together with them finally meet them not be well i've met them oh you'd met them before oh before. i'm sorry yeah so it was going to be great to just hang out uh, one more time in a year and not just a nam friend right you know, that was good but knowing you were going to be here it was like, oh that's crazy you know the funny thing is that's not what i'm that's I, not what I'm, i meant the rock star guys oh, no. but thank you no for me like guys <laughs> like like dan and mick because they're friends uh, and they're hilarious. Henning, yeah, and Henning's become a great friend. I've been a huge fan of Pete Thorne's work since yeah. I was in college. We ended up going to both to uh, Musicians Institute in Hollywood, and uh, he came and did some talks while I was a student there, so I, I followed his career That's quite cool. extensively after that. Um, getting to, finally to see the man in the flesh. Like, yeah. Your viewers have probably seen little snippets of the face here, but I'm, right. look, I'm looking at this man right now. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, go on. Oh, shit. <laughs> I told oh. you this, but I'll, I'll tell everybody else. I had a, a friend of mine beg me to take a photo with you so that he could see what you looked like. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm not going to harsh anybody's gig right oh, now. Oh, that's so funny. So funny. And, and, you know, people are starting to find out now. Wow, I see why he never showed his face. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, last question. Duct tape. Do you think the name derived or was it was named duct tape because they were using it to seal duct work in houses and buildings that they were building maybe in the whatever 40s, 50s, HVAC type of stuff, duct work obviously, or do you think that it was named for the sound that it makes when you tear a piece off? It... What's going on? Am I supposed to duck? Is there something flying around my head? No. This, no. That would be with that pedal show. No. Those guys will hit you in the head with a little plank. Yeah. Oh, God. Man, mix over off of there. You, you, you came in, you slapped him with a piece of ebony, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's what so, I thought. Um, so. Which one do you think it is? Duct tape, the sound or HVAC stuff. Correct. Um, duct tape is a miracle material, people. Uh, it can fix just about anything. It's kind of like the super glue of tape, basically is. It is the super glue of tape. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, from my perspective, I am almost certain that it has to do with HVAC work. And I say that only because I grew up the son of a carpenter. Oh, cool. So, 
my dad being on the job site. Yeah. Duct tape was always around the job sites. He took me on a couple job sites. You always see it. You always see people working with it. So I'm almost certain it has to do with that. I'm thinking so too. But I don't know the answer to the question. That's why I've been asking everybody. Well, now the debate is whether or not it's duct or duck. Yeah. Because there is duct tape brand. There is. And I'm, I'm sure that it started as duct. And, you know, somebody else came up and somebody made generic duct tape. Yeah, with all sorts of fancy, pretty patterns like butterflies. Oh, and yeah. Camouflage. I love glow-in-the-dark duct tape. I love an Argyle guy myself. Okay. See, I like to put the glow-in-the-dark duct tape brand on <laughs> my uh, on my pedal board, and I use it to label all the presets I have on yeah. my G2. And that thing glows in the dark with, like, barely any charge. So if I leave it out, say, in the sun for my board, out in the sun for about 15 minutes. Yeah, you're lit Even up. less. It's all good. It's a space light show. It is. I mean, you should see, I should get, show you a picture of my pedal board. It's, it is a friggin' spaceship. I love it. Yeah. Sean, thank you for taking time to talk to me. Gear man, dude, thank you so much for having me. Have it's a great, great time at the rest of GitCon, and uh, yeah, I'll see you upstairs. I will see you upstairs. Mm -hmm.